So today I want to talk about decision making that can win you more games. Um, we all know that there's games that are unwinnable and there are games that are unlosable. Um, but it's those, I would say, 40% of the games um, that you play where you actually have an impact on the game and that determines your, your win rate. And it's all about decision making process uh, throughout that throughout that game that's going to change your win rate. And this game is a perfect example of that. Um, decision making at the start, where do you go? Um, well, pretty pretty standard. You just kind of go to the flank you spawned at. I think that one's pretty easy. Not many people uh, seem to understand that these days. They want to take off to the other side of the map, but you've pretty much been spawned on your side of the map for a reason, so you generally want to go there. So in this example, I'm in a war spite. And I spawned on the uh, eastern flank, and so I go to the eastern flank. And the thought process here is, is it worth it to go to the 910 line? And not all maps are like this one, where you have to hard commit to the 910 line if you're going to go there at all. Um, and I decided not to. The reason being, uh, look at all the ships that are spotted on the west flank. Uh, the enemy team has basically nothing here, so that's why I'm pushing up the 8 line. There's really no point in me going to the 9-10 line, because we have three ships there, it's 3v1, kind of a 3v2, but it's very likely that we should win that. That's why I'm looking over there thinking, we should win that, right guys? <laughs> uh, but there's really no point in me going there. My ship's too slow to really get away with committing to that flank, and there you go. The graph speed is dead, and if I went to that 9-10 line, I probably would be getting around that corner to get maybe one shot into that graph speed. But then once that guy's dead, I have nothing to do there. And that'd be just useless for the next 5-10 minutes or so. Because it's going to take a while to really get into the fight again. So that's where pushing up a little bit closer makes a lot more sense. Um, and pushing in general makes a lot of sense here, like I said earlier, because there's a lot of ships spotted on the enemy, enemy side. Um, sorry, the western flank. Really, that's what you're looking for. Um, where is the majority of the enemy team in the early game? And then that determines whether you should push or not. If the enemy team has a lot of forces on your flank, probably set up in a holding, kiting position. Uh, but if there's hardly anybody, you need to push because the enemy team has the advantage where the, all their ships are, right? They have a numbers advantage. So you need to outmaneuver the enemy by getting on their side. That's just how it works. Um, and that's why I pushed up so aggressively here. I'm ahead of my destroyers, I'm ahead of my cruisers here because we want to win this game. And we really need to put pressure on the enemy's cap and on their flank. Because they will eventually push through the 1-2 line and win that flank because they just have superior numbers there. On average. I mean, it's possible we have a really insanely good player over there who knows how to kite perfectly and can kill everyone. But that's unlikely. Um, especially if you're running solo. If you've got a dim mate over there and you trust them, maybe that'll work out a little easier. But um, if you're running solo, this is kind of the thought process you need to be taking on whether you should push or not. Here, obviously, getting the aircraft carrier's attention is not amazing in a ship like a war spite with no AA. Um, but we have an opportunity here to kill him, and that's why I'm not really focused on the uh, Omaha or the DD next to me. I really want to get this carrier out, because if we can kill this carrier, that means that I have free reign over here on this flank to kind of do whatever I want to without getting harassed by a carrier the whole game. Um, which, we almost kill him there. And if our DD lands a couple salvos, we should be good. So, and, you know, my team's shooting him, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, we probably have the carrier killed. Uh, spoiler alert, we do not have the carrier killed. And that's going to come back to hurt us way later on. <laughs> uh, but I have to focus on the, the cruiser now. That's just mandatory. There's no way um, I need to... I, I, ha I can't let a cruiser with torpedoes get close to me. Um, overmatch him through the bow, easy dev strike. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got to deal with the uh, destroyer as well. So when dealing with a destroyer who's rushing you, you don't want to shoot until you know you can land the most shots possible. Um, I see a lot of battleship players, and cruiser players for that matter, um, heavy cruisers for that have a longer reload, I'm, I'm meaning. Uh, light cruisers with fast reloads, you should just fire, fire, fire all the time. But you want to wait until the DD turns like that to give you an angle where you're probably going to land more salvos. He w eventually will go for that because he wants to get his torpedoes off. And you may as well wait for that to get the most shots in as possible. Because I only get one shot. I have a 30 second reload. I get one shot. I may as well wait until it's the best one possible. Unfortunately, the CV kills our destroyer. 
And now we're left in a bit of a tricky situation where that carrier can just focus us the rest of the game. But we do have an extra heal because we are running Cunningham. So that's kind of the early game decision making. Uh, you'll notice it's still 12 minutes or so on the clock, and we're already in the enemy spawn in a war spite. So I pushed really, really, really hard this game. And you can see the enemy team is pushing out that 1 2 line like we predicted. That's something you'll get used to over time as you play more and you maybe think about the tactics of the game a little bit more. Um, you'll start to notice flanks that you are going to think, okay, we'll probably lose this flank or, oh, we'll probably win this flank. And then you need to position yourself based on that information at the beginning. And that's why we're so aggressive here. And we are in, you know, we are in the lead right now. Um, health pools are reasonably close, but we do have a bit of a points advantage right now, which is nice. So we don't have to over push. Um, I just want to push far enough that I'm getting the enemy's attention, basically. I just want to make them think about coming home to their home cap. Uh, I want to make them think about me on their broadside, because a war spite is obviously a massive threat on your broadside. And that's all you want. You don't want to overcommit. You notice I'm on half HP. I don't have a heal ready. Um, I'm obviously not an amazing brawling ship in this in this case. So we just want to make them consider us as a threat. Uh, we don't want to play so passive that the enemy team can just ignore us and go kill all of our friendlies on the, you know, one, two, three, four lines in the south there. Um, but we don't want to overcommit, so we die. That's the, that's the most crucial thing about uh, carrying out a game and having a lot of game impact is riding that fine line of being close enough that people see you as a threat and have to deal with you, but not so close that they can just deal with you right away and kill you. Um, it's tricky, but in this case, pushing in is still good. Um, we do have to be a little bit careful because we are about to fight two battleships and possibly a uh, carrier. The carrier is going after my DD guy though, so that's nice for me, not so nice for my DD friend. <laughs> um, but it does allow me to get some pretty big shots into these, uh, these battleships. And you'll notice now that I've got my next heal up, I am turning away, trying to angle. Now that I've got this battleship's attention, that's all I need. All I need is to distract one, maybe two ships, and we should be okay. The enemy team is kind of stuck in that choke point that you can see down there on the, uh, the EF lines. And really, that's what we're, uh, we're trying to do. We're trying to get them to stay there. <laughs> and uh, not be able to push out too quickly. Or at least I want to deal with this New York before uh, before they push out. And then once that I deal with this guy, I can have their broadsides when they do push out. That's kind of the thought process. But I'm not pushing. You notice I stopped pushing. And that is because I saw the DD coming back and that we have a New York to deal with as well. So we don't want to push into torpedoes <laughs> in a battleship. That's how you die really, really, really quickly. You'll see the armor is not amazing on this ship still. But we're gonna take a breather, right? We're just gonna chill. We're gonna reverse towards the enemy. We see the, the smoke, so we know torpedoes are probably coming from that direction. So now I'm gonna go forward and angle to the torpedoes. Um, trying not to ground in the process is a big deal as well. And unfortunately we get caught, which is too bad. But only eating one, we can live with that. And uh, we should be okay but you notice that uh, going forward there saved my life. Um, you always want to, when you know where a destroyer is, like they pop smoke to shoot at you, it probably means they've already launched torpedoes and they're trying to just get out some fires on you and floods and that kind of thing. So you want to angle to where that is for sure. But we're on low HP, time to run. We want to stay alive. Our just being up here in the north is enough pressure that the enemy team isn't able to fully commit to pushing out uh, our forces in the south. Um, and that's great. We've we've distracted the carrier, we've distracted a destroyer, and we've distracted a battleship. That's what we're doing right here. Uh, we lost two destroyers to, our, to the enemy carrier, but that's pretty much to be expected. That's kind of what happens in these mid-tiers with uh, uh, destroyer versus carrier gameplay. There's not really much going on there. <laughs> but just distracting people is enough here and you see we're kind of even on on health we're even on ships kind of and it's just like it's a close game it's a really really close game and to carry this out you need to recognize when to disengage and when to re-engage and right now 
I'm keeping an eye on my detection icon and waiting to see when I go dark because I want to know where the destroyer is. We know the destroyer is the one spotting me and I wanna see how far south he's gone. Um, he can't be in the north because there would have been a gap in the uh, time I was detected and it's not the uh, New York that's detecting me. Well, now he is now that I shot. But because I was lit for so long there behind that island, I knew that destroyer was so far in the south, and you can see he popped up there again, um, that I was wanting to push around this island to keep myself and that island in between myself and the destroyer. That is key if you're on low HP um, and you're not sure if a destroyer is uh, focusing you out, trying to kill you. So. That's That was the thought process there, that's why I turned around and ran away. Now that we've got another heal up, we'll get some, uh, you know, not quite half HP back, but we want to push back in again. You can see that uh, we need to exert a little bit more pressure. My team is in okay positions, not amazing though. We're probably going to lose uh, our battleship in the middle, um, because the rest of our team is near our spawn still. So I want to get um, as much damage out as I can while this battleship is still alive and uh, yeah there he goes down to uh, to the enemy battleships and I want to make as much pressure as I can without over committing to uh, hopefully trade out that guy and man that New York must be on very 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 low health along with the carrier you can see in the the top right there on the uh, HP panels there. The carrier basically has no HP left and that New York with that last hit must have very 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 little HP left so um, fortunately our carrier gets the uh, the enemy carrier finally uh, so we don't have to deal with planes now well unless he has one more squad that he decided to send after us but we probably don't have to deal with planes now so that's why I'm more willing to push in. Um, I have lower tier battleship to deal with and I should be able to do that um, in a tier 6, especially with a war spite, the ship is amazing. Um, and you should definitely be able to deal with any tier 5 and 6 uh, to six battleships with this ship. It is it is just that good. Um, on this ship, uh, specifically talking about uh, what it's good at, it has overmatch. Uh, it's 380mm guns. It's incredibly accurate. And uh, it's got a decent turning radius, meaning it can dodge torpedoes reasonably well. Here, um, I'm not pushing in anymore though. I wanted to spot one of their battleships. Um, it is a premium ship, so I know I have likely have a concealment advantage because I have a full 19 point commander on this thing. And uh, I have concealment, so that's my goal. I was trying to engage one battleship, turn away, and uh, try and stay alive and put as much pressure on them as I could. But the Warspite's a great ship, and you can actually get it for free these days. If you are new to the game and use a friend invite code, uh, or if you haven't played for a while and you use a similar code, I believe it's you can use the same kind of code. Um, it's these just invite codes you can get from different people who play the game. Um, I believe I have one linked below my Twitch stream. And uh, yeah, if you play one battleship in a tier 6 non-premium ship, uh, you'll get yourself a Warspite for free these days. It used to be a... Uh, it used to be a Texas they would give you for free, a tier 5 battleship that's nowhere near as good as this one. So pretty solid deal, honestly, getting this ship for free as a new player. That's pretty awesome. Um, and you'll notice that I was just trying to turn to avoid those uh, those drops. I've talked about this before, but to, to avoid a carrier drop, you want to turn in or away from torpedo bombers so they drop your bow or your stern. You want to turn broadside to dive bombers so that they drop across your ship. Their uh, dispersion ellipse on dive bombers is very vertical and uh, it's a vertical ellipse. So you want to make it so as hard as possible for the carrier, right? So you want the most of that ellipse on either side of your ship as possible. And then rocket planes, you're probably not going to dodge. They're just that fast, at least in a uh, war spite. But you still want to uh, go bow into those. The uh, ellipse is horizontal in that case. So in a destroyer, if you're dealing with rocket planes, try to go bow in or stern away, uh, stern into the uh, rocket planes. You don't want them to drop your broadside. That's how they deal massive amounts of damage. Fortunately, our Leander gets the uh, enemy destroyers, so this game is pretty much wrapped up, honestly. Um, I just have this one battleship to deal with, but it's unlikely they win this game. Um, as long as I angle properly and play smart. Uh, it's only two minutes left on the clock. 
I could just run away at this point, but honestly, I think this is my highest War Spite damage game I've had. And I was kind of hunting for that 200k damage in a War Spite. In a tier 6 and tier 5 game, that's a lot for uh, for uh, any ship in that kind of matchmaker. So I was pretty happy about this one. Um, obviously, Cunningham had giving me 6 heals this game helped a lot. You'll notice I use all 6 of my heals. <laughs> Um, we did a pretty solid job of tanking, I would say. But it all comes down to decision making, guys. It's all in knowing when to push and when to back off. Um, when you're on that off flank, you're you're the one getting the uh, enemy's sides. You don't want to overcommit and die. Um, the power of your position is making the enemy team have to think about the crossfire they're pushing into uh, when they're pushing through with their strong flank. That's your goal, is to really make them consider that they're pushing into a crossfire and they usually won't or they'll make mistakes and then you'll get to hit their broadsides and war spite does that very well but realistically your goal is to provide just enough pressure to make them think um, too many times i see people doing these flanking maneuvers where they flank the enemy team and the enemy team is bottled up in this one like quarter of the map but then they go and die because they over push because they've been pushing the entire game to no resistance then they over push into that quarter of the map and they die and then it gives the enemy team a way out and then oftentimes the enemy team wins those games even though they shouldn't just because people over commit um, so it's that hard uh, hard to find balance of not pushing too far but also uh, pushing far enough that you're actually helping your team because if you just sit and spawn um, like if I had just sat you know, on the 9-10 line, gone up there and just kind of chilled there, uh, we probably would have lost this game because the enemy team would have pushed through the 1-2, gotten to our cap, and, you know, picked off our team one by one. So that's the thought process in carrying games, guys, um, especially on a pushing flank. And we didn't quite get 200k, but three kills, 193 is pretty solid for a tier 6. Uh, in tier 6 and tier 5 matchmaker, too. Not even facing tier 8s in this one. So pretty crazy. Um... I had a lot of fun making this one, and I'll just show you real quick what the uh, War Spite is built up as. It's a pretty standard, uh, it's a pretty standard captain. So for the War Spite, I am running my uh, Cunningham on here. This is trained for my Conqueror, but it works great on War Spite as well. Gunfeeder is less useful on a War Spite where you overmatch basically everything at your tier. Um, but Grease the Gear is very handy for getting your turret traverse down to 45.5. Still excruciatingly long, but it helps out. Uh, adrenaline Rush for the slightly better reload, and of course Deadeye Concealment, 12.4 kilometer concealment on a tier 6 battleship with this kind of accuracy is very, very, very strong. And then I take the extra heal, you see, you notice how uh, much damage I tanked that last game, and uh, yeah, it it's very handy to have that extra heal in those games where you're trying to, uh, to carry things out. Um, I run Damage Control System Mod 2. Um, because you're not really dodging anything in this ship, it's too slow to really make use of a, of the uh, propulsion or uh, rudder shift kind of thing. Aiming system is pretty obvious. Um, damage control system, and then made armaments. That's how I've got this thing set up right now. Um, yeah, War Spite is awesome, and you can get it for free if you've got that uh, that friend invite or you haven't played for a while, like I said. So, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.